RSG day 11, uh, thanks to James Cronin for today's topic. He sent me a question in. James is another decent player at Ongerby Golf Club. Uh, his question was specifically about divots and compressing the golf ball. We have already spoken about the fact uh, through this series that the objective is, as we come into the hidden area, the club should make contact with the golf ball fractionally before it makes contact with the turf. I'm going to give you a drill to do. We've all got lots of time on our hands at the moment. My biggest error when I was a 10 year old taking up golf was I used to actually hit the top of the ball. I didn't actually hit the ground before the ball. I used to hit the top of the ball. Some of you might hit the ground first. We call that fat. I used to what we call thin it or top it. Um, and as a 10 year old, I didn't have golf lessons. I didn't take a lesson until much later in life. Um, so I didn't have anybody to tell me what to do. My logic said to me, if I made contact with the grass, I'd make contact with the ball, albeit I could make contact a little bit early. I'm going to take you back to a drill I used to do. The golf course was a long way from home, which meant we could only play at the weekend, and I used to get frustrated, and so did my dad, uh, with watching me top the ball. So I used to take myself into a field, locally, and actually just practice hitting the grass. I brought my mat back out again, my doormat. If you can strike the mat, going back to that simply brilliant principle, every time you swing the club, you're basically guaranteed to take a divot. Obviously where that divot starts and ends in relation uh, to the golf club is extremely important again. But yesterday we spoke about starting with our feet together and placing them equal distance apart to leave the ball in the centre of the stance because that was the bottom dead centre of the swing circle. I actually never used to use a ball until I'd hit the grass a hundred times without missing. I was 10 years of age and I had lots of time and I was in a field. But the consequence of that was I never hit the top of the ball again. Imagine how good it felt after a very short time not to hit the top of the ball ever again, to know that I was going to strike the ball solidly somewhere. After you make solid contact with the ball, the only other requirement is that it needs to be in the middle of the club face. So I used to practice hitting things like daisies and just making sure that I could make contact with that as I came through the hitting area. As I grew older and I went into coaching and I got better, I started to introduce an ABC formula that I used to talk to people about to try and clear the mind and give them a simple process towards ball striking uh, and creating a good divot. A was my start position and it included all the things that go together in setup, which we won't go into right now. But by the time I'd got myself into what I perceived to be a good setup position, I imagined an A over the top of the ball. B was my turn to the top of the backswing up here, just behind my right ear. And C was the end of my follow through round here. And basically, my whole work ethic was to set myself up to the ball, tip my A, it was over the ball, turn myself that my setup was good, keep my head steady, turn to B, and swing through to C and make contact with the grass in between, 100 times before I even hit a golf ball. After a few weeks, I never top the ball again. It's a great stage to be in and it's a great confidence setter if you know you're going to make good solid contact with the ball every time you make a golf swing. Can you brush the grass every time you hit the ball? There's lesson 11. See you tomorrow. Thank you.